Today on Near Man Condition, we're gonna talk of what the Professor, body slide by one. My name is Omar Jair Bolivia Panduro Messia Ascani's son. I came from the year 3999 to tell you guys about cable. But but we have like streaming services now like Hulu and Netflix and What? 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 Why did you say your name so long? I mean, I know you're Latino, but... <laughs> Don't be... That was going to be so... <laughs> Don't be so racist! <laughs> you're close, though. Like, most of that is my name. <laughs> no, that's cool. I think we're going to talk about, like, X Factor and Bishop and Strife and Cable. And I was like, no. I love those comments. Stop. Stop. What? Stop. What? Can we... Stop. You are very close, though. You we're mentioned... going to focus on Cable. Since who Cable... Is, like, who is the defining character... For those of us who read comics in the early 90s. You're so, right. He is the only good thing to come out of the Summer's line. Uh, <laughs> oh, I thought we were talking about DSL and wait, wait, dial-up modems. I have some shoulder pads that would like to tell you otherwise. <laughs> okay, so well, I'm going to give you guys a brief history of Cable. And it's going to be interesting because you two really don't know that much about it. So I want to see how well I pull it off if I'm able if, to teach you guys anything. I did so, see a picture of him in the upcoming movie. What book did Cable start in? Okay, so everything began in New Mutants 86 with a small little panel, but really his full appearance was in New Mutants 87, <laughs> which is when he first appeared. Like New Mutants was a goofy book that had like characters like Birdbrain, and then we're going on adventures. And I'm not downplaying any of Louis Simonson's run. They were wonderful stories, but the characters weren't really progressing or going anywhere. Um, then comes along this young gun guy named Rob Liefeld, 20 years old, uh, and just starts drawing over muscular characters and super sexed female characters and everybody with pouches and small feet or no feet. <laughs> you know, there's a, there's a lot of jokes about that, but I love right, Rob right, Liefeld's right. art. I mean, I was I was hooked on Rob Liefeld's art when I was growing up. And pretty much he was handed the task of like, hey, by the editor at Marvel of X-Men Comics, we need to create a new leader for new for the New Mutants. He needs to be a military style leader. And that's pretty much all him and Louise Simonson, who was the writer on the book, knew. So they created Cable. When they did that, did they know who he was supposed to be or who he was going to be? Ah, okay. So no. They did not. Okay. So where where did that when did part he become of his Nathan yep. Summers? <laughs> Just give the whole game away, why don't you? <laughs> okay, Spoiler. so Nathan Summers, once again, we talked about Uncanny X-Men 201 being one of our favorite issues where Storm and Cyclops fight for leadership of the team. Yes. Right? yes. Cyclops' kid was born in Uncanny X-Men 201. Nathan. With Madeline Pryor. To the clone of Jean Grey, Madeline Pryor. Madeline dies, he stays, Nathan stays with um, Cyclops and Jean in X-Factor. Everything is fine. Uh, Which I have X Factor number so one. So keep in mind, keep this in mind though. Okay, so <laughs> this is uh, 1990, March of 1990, I think, mm -hmm. when Cable first appears in New Mutants 87. Right? He forms his team. They're fighting the Mutant Liberation Front. And he tells the new, the new Mutants, "Hey, you kids are cool. Come and hang out with this guy. That's like an old grandpa with a receding hairline, but and a big giant fucking gun. muscles <laughs> and giant guns with multiple fucking holes." I, yeah. So anyway, and they're like, "Yeah, man, we'll come and hang out with you." <laughs> <laughs> Considering our last teammate was Bird Brain, so. <laughs> That was March of 1990. In ni the summer of 1991, one, once again, one yeah. of my favorite books was Endgame in X Factor, where Apocalypse kidnaps a team along with Baby Summers, Nathan Summers, and he injects this thing called the techno organic virus into the baby. The baby is dying. At the end of the storylines, after Cyclops blows the crap out of Apocalypse while saying that. Puts a different picture in my head. Uh, destroys <laughs> Apocalypse. There was this character named uh, As Ascani. Like she was uh, from I the Ascani clan. I have vague memories the, of this storyline. From line. the future. She traveled right. back to the past because she knew that she needed the baby and take the baby to the future. She told Scott, Scott, do you want your baby to live? Baby needs to come with me to the and we're going to go to the future. 2,000 years into the future, you will never see your baby again. And I think that was a really cool moment for Scott because he was like, of course I want my baby to live. Knowing that he will never see his son again, so he lets him go. And I think that was the exact line, so I let him go. So, now that was in 1991. And at the very end of that 
arc is a page of the Watcher just talking about nonsense that we don't understand because it's Chris Claremont in his <laughs> hey I'm getting the fuck out of Marvel days <laughs> so he's writing all these like poetic things anyway and he's just giving you kind of hints and clues what happens to the baby where it grows up and at the very like there's shards of pieces of just pieces of glass and one of the pieces is a picture of Cable so I mean it, you're so, like and, and oh. I think, but I still think at that point it was still just a hint like they right. hadn't decided because there were there were other people on the right. other shards so back in New Mutants we go back to New Mutants, you know, 88 through 100, and it starts becoming more like a militant book instead of like, hey, let's go and have fun, where Cable really has a drive to push these kids to be ready for an upcoming war, mainly with Strife, which is like his arch nemesis, <laughs> which we'll get to that in a minute. Strife. <laughs> so, New Mutants 100 comes out. It is the final issue. And... At the very end of New Mutants 1, number 100, they're like, we're going to form a team, a new force. And somebody jumps up and is like, an X-Force! Good job, Cannonball. That's what we're going to call ourselves. Yep. I wish I was kidding, but it's, it kind of went down, down like that. And then at the very end, it's Strife revealing that he also has Cable's face. Right? So the guy under the helmet that he's been fighting the entire time also shares his face. So now... It's not until X Force we get into X Force. Right. It's like six and seven and eight. We find out that Cable is from the future. He traveled back in time, of all things, because Cannonball's immortal. So he has to teach Cannonballs the ways of immortality. In Executioner's Song, Which... we learned that it was really Strife that was the son of Cyclops and Madeline Pryor that went to the future. And in order to try to save him, Apocalypse cloned him and made him in the Cable. That's what we learned. They both fight to the very end. And Cable's like, I have this plan, Dad. And he's talking to Cyclops. He's calling him Dad, finally. And he's like, you got to do this. You got and, and Cyclops again, he says, so I let him go again. And they both get stranded into the time stream, right? Both Strife and Cable. Cable comes back in his own little miniseries. And then he has his own ongoing series. And it's not until issue six or seven of that ongoing series that we actually find out that, no, he is not the clone. But he is the original Nathan Summers. Right, that just got sent to the future. It was Strife that was the clone. Now this is, and it's not that confusing because okay, no, it is. Well, no, 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 it's going hang to... on. Let's let's make it a little more confusing because I, th I think I might be jumping ahead a little bit chronologically in when the books came out. But in Cable's life, there, it's also worth pointing out after Gene and Cyclops got married. And do you remember what issue of, of Thirty? X Men that was X Men Thirty. There is a miniseries, The yep. Adventures of Cyclops and Jean Grey, where <laughs> what was they, that go book about? Their, they go on their honeymoon <laughs> and they oh, are pulled into the future. Their minds are pulled into the bodies of a character named Slim and Red yeah, to ridiculous. raise baby Cable in the future for 12 years. Yeah. So Ask Ascani Sun and the uh, Adventures of Cyclops and Phoenix, those miniseries, that's what that was about. So they got to raise their kid. Well... Cyclops sort of. got to raise his kid. And Jean, sort of, because it wasn't really her, but the That's clone not... of Jean Grey's kid. They raised him in the future to fight Apocalypse, and he wins. And and another thing and, to, and to think about, uh, to know about Cable, too, is that when he shows up in New Mutants, he is a complete badass that knows characters like Wolverine. He's like, oh yeah, Wolverine and I have tussled many times. And as a reader, you know, I was 12 years old, I'm like, what? I'm looking through my Marvel <laughs> index. I'm like, that's impossible. It never stays here. And then Wolverine never met a character named Cable. Right? Because like, that's what Actually. all of us were doing. All of us were doing. So, well, we're I mean, like, when did this happen? So, his stories are not really sequential, right? They're not in chronological order. They jump. He comes from okay. Because literally, when I said there, so was, this, the there was an old guy with a receding hairline, when he comes back the next time, he has a full, beautiful set of hair, and you're like, where did he go? Well, and then Cable has a kid named Tyler, who was, like, brainwashed by Strife and became Tolliver, who was hiring Cable to do all these things, and that's where Deadpool is first introduced. He was hired by Tolliver to go kill Cable. And he becomes evil, and he gets killed by Wolverine. After Executioner's Song and all that came about, it was more about him and focusing on his past, I and mean, his past being the X-Men's future, right? Because you kind of want to know. And because his whole mission is to kill, like, really, it's been Mr. Sinister behind everything, right? Sinister that knows. has been pulling the strings because he wanted to create the perfect specimen to destroy Apocalypse. And that's his whole purpose. He's a machine. He's a weapon to destroy Apocalypse. So he's his power is to... He has telekinesis and telepathy, like his mother. And now, over the years, that has changed. Within his own series, 
Like, that's how he's able to lift his arm, because his arm is missing, because it got taken by the techno-organic virus. His, that's why he has an eye that glows, you know, because techno-organic virus. Over the years, through his own comic book, the, that power has kind of changed. And like I said, it lasted up to 100 and so issues. Uh, he ended up killing Apocalypse after, during the um, the 12 storyline, where Cyclops kind of joined with Apocalypse, and they became one, so he took the, what is that, the scimitar? The scimitar. Scimitar, and he <laughs> the, killed The scimitar spelled with P-S-I? Yeah. <laughs> so he, so killed, he killed his dad slash he, Apocalypse. Well, no, I mean, he, Cyclops was fine at the time. Apocalypse. Now. So Apocalypse <laughs> is dead, and he's like, oh, shit, well... I guess my book's going to get canceled. That was around <laughs> Cable 75 and 76, but they kept going. You know, they were, he met Irene Merriweather, who has a really cool name. She's a reporter that was telling his story. And it, oh, and then the, the, the whole Liefeld thing happened where they couldn't use the name Cable, so they switched the name over to Soldier X. That lasted for 12 issues. Bam, the book ends at the same time. Deadpool slash Agent X end. So Marvel decided, well, let's just... You know, we need a good buddy book. Like, we need, like, old Iron Fist and Luke Cage book. Luke Cage. And this wonderful piece of material came out. This is my favorite. Like, one of my favorite comics of all time. This is Cable and Deadpool, despite of what they say on the cover of Deadpool and Cable. They just put Deadpool's name because it sells more than Cable does. Yeah, Cable's kind of, like, cross out by yeah, like yeah. Deadpool's head. Yeah, so, <laughs> this storyline puts them together where, you know, Deadpool is the slapstick kind of humor that, uh, that crosses, you know... That breaks the fourth wall all the time. Mm -hmm. And Cable's the most serious, like, militant type of leader. So this storyline is is just really awesome because uh, where Cable can teleport with uh, Professor, right? That's how he's able to teleport via Grey Malkin. Because he has this giant spaceship called Grey <laughs> You're Malkin. You're just making noise. Yeah. <laughs> okay, well, anybody that has read X-Men knows it. that's where the is, X-Mansion is located. is on Grey Malkin Lane. So he names all these things specifically is, after him. Is Grey Malkin ship... Yes. Okay. Gary Malkin took the computer from ship. See? X-Factor. So anyway. X-Factor! <laughs> anyway, in this arc, he's like, he, his powers have just gotten huge. He has the ability of, like, X-Man, which we will talk about another time, because that's another fucking confusing thing. But anyway. X-Man to be X-Man. He, he, he wants to save the world. And he makes Gray Malkin, he destroys Gray Malkin and puts it back together and calls it Providence, where, like, everybody can come and live. And he starts wiping people's minds to make everybody good. And, of course, the X-Men are like, that's morally wrong. You can't do that, Cable. So yeah. you have to keep in mind, he is keeping the entire Providence up with his power, right? He's also keeping his arm up, and he's fighting all the X-Men while this, this is all happens here. Then he fights Silver Surfer, because, of course, the X-Men can't handle it. So they send in Silver Surfer, and, you know, Silver Surfer destroys his arm. They get into his fight. But, I mean, it's, it's a damn good fight. Uh, so this lasted 50 issues. Cable pretty much, you know, becomes like this almost omnipotent being. But of course, like most characters in the Marvel Universe that become like that, they either die or they get their power stripped away. Mm -hmm. So he dies. Again. <laughs> Spoilers. Oh, please. Cable's always come, come back. Um, C Cable, Cable's a descendant of Jean Grey. He's not dead, right? He comes back during the Messiah complex and Messiah war, and he's the one holding baby Hope, right? The new Messiah. In a lone wolf and cub kind of style, he takes Baby Hope and is protecting her from all people. Bishop, who is now a villain that wants to kill Baby Hope because for what? in his future, she is part of the reason why his future happens. So if he kills her, which makes no sense, I know, because I hated that part. Uh, so Cable's I'm jumping really from... Like Bishop. Yeah, I know. Uh, so Cable's jumping from timeline to timeline, protecting Baby Hope. That adventure Racism. ends, and he, at the end of Second Coming, he dies again. Oh, but he comes back. Spoiler. <laughs> he comes back in Avengers X-Men X-Sanction, whatever it was called. It was that good. Uh, where Jeff Loeb and Ed McGinnis brought him back, and he's fighting all the Avengers for no reason, because he knows something. Because he knows they the stole his oh, pouches. That's what it was. He knows the Phoenix Force is coming, and it's coming for hope. So for some reason, he has to fight the Avengers. So that leads on to the X-Men Avengers crossover, <laughs> and after that, the whole fiasco's over. There, Cable, does he die at the end of that? No, he does not die. He was put in a coma, but he stripped away He stripped away of he his powers no again. He was hit by a giant snake. So Cable is one of these characters that always comes back, because he has that nice loophole of, I'm a time traveler. I didn't die. I just got like slipped into the time stream. It's kind of like Barry Allen, almost. So what's Cable doing now? Believe it or not, he's still time traveling. 
Except this time he's going after some guy named Conquest in his new James Robinson and Carlos Pacheco series. I really feel like you've proven my point that Cable is just kind of a blank slate for whatever story they want. They have. Did you not to hear me tell. going on about this wonderful series called Cable and Deadpool? <laughs> this was brilliant. He was dead in the last nine issues of this, so it was just like Wolverine and Deadpool, <laughs> <laughs> Spider-Man and Deadpool, oh, Doctor Strange and Deadpool. <laughs> Uh, no, seriously, uh, if I were to recommend anything out of here, it would be this wonderful book. And I hope they reprint it because this is out of print now. Or they print them in trade paperbacks because um, everybody needs to read this. As you can tell, we spent a lot of time and money making this episode. So if this is your first time watching our show, please don't forget to subscribe and like us. Um, if we missed anything, let us know. Thank you all for watching. Have a good day. Oh, God damn it, Dad! <laughs> <laughs>